welcome back everybody. Slim Slam and the Bandwagon fan. Week 7 preview action coming for you tonight. I'm Slim, he's Slam, and to my left, that is the Bandwagon fan. Boys, how are we doing? I'm good, Blaze. And yep. I want to ask you, how are you doing? Because no one ever asks you. No one actually cares. Um, I am good, thank you. It's good to be back for another installment of the SSBF podcast. Uh, Schnazzy, how are you doing, my friend? Mate, I'm as excited as the Jersey Cartel tonight. Yes. There's a game that the Eagles might win this week, and I'm <laughs> pumped and he's pumped, and so Abs- are all Eagles fans out there. Absolutely. Big shout out to the boys, at, well, the boy over at the Jersey Cartel um, for all his hard work there, obviously, obviously sponsoring the show. And getting the hottest jerseys in NFL football into your hands each and every week. Um, So, boys, to get us going tonight, um, as we like to do on the preview show, it's become a staple for us. Mm. The Elite Eight. And we can proudly say that we have seen some movement this week. Yes, fine. Um, Some massive movement. Some massive movement. We had a lot of games to work through um, between a lot of, you know, Elite Eight candidates. So, Mm. with no further ado... I'd like to get ahead of it here and say I'm not going to do eight. Okay. You I'm don't refuse to do, do that. Reckon, yeah, no, do you reckon Sam for the first eight. time ever you could try and not give away who's in front of the team you're talking about? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Yeah, but I won't be doing eight. So <laughs> if you can read into that at home, <laughs> okay. I'm not doing eight. It's a bit of foreshadowing. Chucky, okay. take it away, my no friend. Worries. So at eight this week, we've had to do it. We had we, we had to. to. We were forced into it. No, but we do. The record speaks for itself. And it's the five and one bears. <laughs> I had to do it. I didn't want to do it. It hurts me to do it, but I had to do it. The Bears are in there at eight. Why? I don't know. But they're five I'd rather the NFC East. Yeah, well, yeah, Schnaz did make a case for the NFC East because they had the same amount of wins, but I wasn't giving him that. So the Bears are there. Now, it might be for a short time because they've got the Rams this week, but i tell you what, Blaze. We'll if, have to put them up. If they win again, I will be... Sh- if both. they beat the Rams, we'll have to put them higher on the board. I'll both be shocked and disgusted. Mm. If they beat the Rams, we can bring back your best bet. Yeah, I, no. No, no, I won't, I won't, I've, I won't I've sign actually, off on that. I've actually hopped off on the best bet. Yeah, I think everybody has, mate. You were probably two weeks later than everybody else. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, three for mine. The, no. bears are, the Bears are at eight. <laughs> you know... It's blown me out the At water. the end of the day, you have to take... No, on the win-loss record. You do. Then it's not an easy league to win games in, and to be five and one, you got to be doing some things right. So, Bears fans, you're in the elite eight. You're obviously ecstatic about it. Blaze, hit us with seven. To lay some credit on the Bears with the team that I'm now announcing at seven, the Bears have beat this team. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are now into seven after a big win against the Packers. Great segue. But the um the Bears did knock them off. So there you go. There's a little bit of credit there. But the Bucks are are trending in the right direction. Um, you know, I'm probably one of the more outspoken people against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't think they're going to be much chop when it counts at the end of the year. But with that said, they're, they're winning some games now and, um, you know, good luck to them. They've actually just rolled the Packers. They've absolutely rolled the Packers. So mm. credit where's credit's due. Um, they've been around the mark in weeks previous. That big win there um, has really pushed them over into, into that number seven slot. So maybe, Shinazi, you can take number six. Number six, down from number three last week, I believe. Yep. The Packers... So another segue. You, you might be thinking, geez, they lost to the Bucks and you got the Bucks at seven. Well, no, they've only lost one game. Yeah. Yep. They've had a very good season. Yep. But they were exposed by the better team on the day. Mm-hmm. And given we've got the Bears at the eight, we couldn't really drop them any lower. It wouldn't no, be feasible. No. Wouldn't be fair. Wouldn't yeah. be what about right. that? Or that just. stat that I told you just before, Schnazzy, about Aaron yes. Rodgers off a bye. Yeah. Was that one and one and five, five. in his yeah. last six games after a bye? Is that right? Yeah. And Good. the year they won the Super Bowl slam, we got anything to add to that? Yeah, they didn't have the bye first up, I don't mm. believe. Yeah, right. Yeah. Very interesting. Little bit of um. So Aaron doesn't love to play off a bye. Yeah, is what you can take away from that. Yeah, it's one to watch mm. for sure. So bounce back game this week, I reckon. Calling mm. it now. Yeah, mm. they do have the Texans. So, so watch your space. At five, now there was this was up for debate, wasn't it? Between, it was. But so five, we've got the Steelers. I didn't want to give away four there. It was just I reeled that back in. I You're almost smart. did. You're a good so man. So we've got the Steelers at five. They've got a big game this week, Blaze. No yeah. doubt. Um, <laughs> and against number four. It'll, it'll tell you. It'll tell you a lot about these two teams. We'll see some movement for sure yep. but uh, the Steelers yeah they've just been doing everything right haven't they Blaze? there's nothing you can fall them on they're 5-0 defense is playing lights out offense is playing some pretty good football Yep. Um, so yeah why don't you tell us who's sitting at 4 so as Slam are quite who they're playing this week quite well handled the um, navigating those waters they're, they're playing the Titans so you know it's going to be a massive game um, in the context of both their respective seasons but especially the Elite 8 um, you know we've been dry for lack of a better word for movement in the elite eight and now we get some real marquee matchups to decide where teams 
are at as we approach the midway mark of the season. Mm. Um, Tennessee, obviously, are running a play-action, run-heavy game off Derrick Henry and Tanner Hill that is to die for at the moment. They're you know, running really hot. Um, they're stacking a lot of points and there's plenty of highlights going around the place as well. So watch this space. We've got the Tennessee higher at the moment. Um, obviously, they remain an undefeated team as well as the Steelers. Um, we think they might just be playing a touch better football at the moment. I think their record. Um, yeah. The Steelers, and the, and the, the only, extra game. The, yeah. the question mark we have of the Steelers at this stage is their record. Yeah. Whereas the Titans, two big wins, one off that game against the Texans and mm. then also the big win against the Bills. Really the the CV is a bit more impressive in the yeah. teams they've played, no Absolutely. doubt. Absolutely. Plus, we always hash back to it, 15-3 and three in the last 18 games. Yeah. It's hard to, it's hard to go against that. Number three. Yeah, Shnazi, that's you, Shnazi. Shnazi Bob. Yep, that's me. And I won't give away who's at two. Hasn't changed from last week, if you want a hint. <laughs> We've got the Ravens at three, up from, up from four. We did send the Packers down to six. Yep. But once again, the Ravens, utterly consistent. Mm-hmm. One one blip on the radar this year, one bad game. Besides that, they've been pretty flawless all year. Their run and pass game's pretty well balanced. Would like to see a bit more through the air yep. in the coming weeks just to prepare himself for some of those high offensive teams like, you know, the Seahawks. <laughs> <laughs> And those other teams and above those them. Other teams above them. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Slammer? Well, Schnauzer's <laughs> giving you two and one. So, I mean, do we even need to bother? But at number two, we've got the Kansas City Chiefs. And I'm not happy about it because I wanted to put them straight he back did. to one. He did. I wanted to put them straight back to one. Why? Because I think they're a more complete football team than the other one is. And they can, they did on the weekend, Blaze, against the Bills, what yep. people say they can't do. And they smash mouth football. They ran the football down your throat. They can win a variety of different ways. The defense is actually playing lights out. In five of the six games the Chiefs have played this year, 20 points or under is all they've allowed. Yeah. So that's great defense. We know how good their offense is. I think they're the best team in football. I think everybody thinks they're the best team in football, except for one guy down the end. And Blaze, over to you with the number one team. And adding Lev Bell. And adding, and Lev, adding Bell. Lev Bell. Hey, um... Chucky put it really well there. I think the Kansas City Chiefs um, are right there at the absolute door. Mm. But the Seattle Seahawks maintain their position in number one for another week. Um, they remain undefeated. They got over the line in the week just gone. Um, oh, sorry, they came off the bye. The, week, bye. Be- the week before... <laughs> Tough game against the Sorry, bye. the week mm. before they just got over the line. These weeks start to blur together. But um, obviously, I coined it many episodes ago now, the squad of men. Mm. Now, it's been a running gag since then. But mm. Russell Wilson and the boys, they just keep rolling. They, you know, they've got DK Metcalf, who's essentially the embodiment of you know, the Hulk. And it's just kind of all happening for them. They've mm. got everything going on. Chris Carson is a supreme running back when he's up and running. Um, you know, health is always a bit of a question with him. But at the time being, he is healthy. So mm. watch your space, Seattle. Um, they've got a nice game this week, um, which we'll touch on in a game of the week type scenario. But for the time being... They hold number one Mm. um, and watch this space. See what happens from there. Snazzy, do you want to tell us just who's on the out of there? Who's on your bubble? Uh, So we've got the NFC East, the Cards, the Colts and the Rams. Mm. I believe they're the three teams and divisions that we have on the outer. Yeah, Or the NFC East, depending on how you like the stack wins. Mm. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, the interesting thing is, this is why there could be some movement next week too. Yeah. I've taken the piss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're going to get at least two wins this week, the NFC East. Yeah, which is no. two divisional matchups. No, there might be some draws. There might be, but yeah. you know what? Grand old dad doesn't come around that many times. A nil all draw. With that said, said, let's jump into one of those NFC East games. Um, Marquee matchup. Mm. Thursday night football this week is the Eagles and the Giants. Mm. Oh, mate, I'm excited. So, you know, for the Australian viewers, you get a Friday morning special um, to kind of kick off your... You know, if you're getting stuck into the weekend a bit early with the AFL grand final and whatnot. Those in Melbourne in Victoria, long weekend for the grand I final, so. I believe, yeah. still. Yeah. They, they might have moved the public all day. I think they've maintained that, yeah. that day off. So, you know, tune into this one if you so so choose. Maybe mm. slide a bit of money on um on Sportsbet SGM function to try and spice it up a little bit. But I think the Philadelphia Eagles will be too strong here for New York and Danny Fumbles. Um, but you know there is there is some some storyline in it. If nothing else, that the NFC East, the team will win and improve in what is in a lackluster division. Anything to watch here, boys? I think the best thing to watch here is the first leg of Slammers Guarantee. <laughs> so yeah. true, Shazzy boys, yeah. so true. So we had a bad week last week, but we're blaming that on Blaze and his best bet because he dragged my leg down with it. I'll cop that. So this week we're trying to get back on track, and I've got an interesting one for you. So. A lot of the games that had short price favourite Snazi that I wanted to steer away from in the guarantee 
is because they're playing divisional rivals. Mm. Now, when you're playing divisional rivals, it's really, a lot of the time, it can be more 50-50, 60-40 mm. than it really should be based on... Win-loss papers. records yeah. don't really mean a lot. It doesn't matter a lot when some of those teams... You know, there's a lot of massive rivalries there, so you can't yeah. always guarantee what's going to happen there. So, obviously, to open up, I'm taking the Eagles over the Giants, even though it's a divisional game, but... I mean, the, the Giants, Giants just, can't win. The Giants are just no. so bad. So yeah, unless Clay says it, yeah. yeah. Unless so, I spoke it. So yeah, we're we're going the Eagles there at a dollar forty six. We're going to back them in. Then we're going to add the Bills in at a dollar thirteen against the Jets. Now you might be sensing a pattern. Yes, I am picking against teams that play in New York <laughs> City, to be exact. Yeah. Now, so I was having a bit of trouble, Blaze, with my third leg. Yes. And then I had a look, and I thought, <laughs> what? I had a look, and I thought, which teams are pretty good on offense? The Seahawks and the Cards. And which teams don't play great defense? You play your cards right, your third leg. The Seahawks <laughs> and the Cards. Now, the line, for the, the line for the points there is over 53 and a half. We're going to take the overs because both of those teams are putting up 30 points pretty consistently. If you get a 33 to 30 game, that's 63 points. That's 10 over. Yep. That's at $1.86. You combine them all together. You hit the power play button. It's three twenty six fifty on that. You'd probably get 176 backs or something like that, Blaze. And maybe you can take that, 160 odds, you can take that $176, slap it on Medicare and go get your third leg checked out. <laughs> so true. So true <laughs> you could. Or you could take that $176 and just have a good time. Yeah. No, so, good, good luck to you. I think that that is a nice little guarantee from there, Chucky. Yeah. Um, obviously, betting against, uh, betting against, well, betting for the team that is against someone in New York City, that's yeah. a bit of a mouthful. Um, is just betting, betting against, against New, New York, York City. City. Yeah. yeah. Is pretty safe. If you don't have Once a again, stroke, while we have our own Gmail, we don't uh, use. Yeah. <laughs> Or the Hotmail, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking way off And that, the, eh? the only other time I've done an over for points, Snazzy, it was the Seahawks against mm. the Cowboys. So We did pick that early. Yeah. And that one came off. And so. it is a leaky defense. There um, you go. So there's one to watch there. Punters, if you want to get involved, obviously the best bet is on ice um, indefinitely, probably forever. Mm. Um, if, if it's they, six feet under. If these two have anything to say Jenny about Moore's it, it's definitely dead. So he's hanging out with Dan Quinn. Yeah. Um, Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien. Yeah. yeah. Soon and to be Adam Geis. Mike Jacecki every other week. So, mm. you know. <laughs> Mike McCarthy's probably going to be joining them soon. <coughs> They're going to need to expand that more soon. <coughs> it's, it's just filling up. Hey, um, so obviously the Eagles three ways here for us. I don't yeah. think anyone's brave enough to take the Giants. No. Um, certainly not in Philadelphia as well. I think as long as um, the ball control from Wentz is good, the Giants just can't put up enough points offensively themselves after I did what could only be done by Blaze mm. and just put the mockers, the jinxes them as big as I could, calling them a oh, top eight offense. I'm not going to trademark yeah. mockers as my own. I think mockers mm. is a thing that's been going around in sports commentary kind of circles for a long time. Yep, no, but on just... this podcast, you're the man. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. But no, if, if Wentz holds the ball here, doesn't any stupid turnovers, yeah. not looking for highlight players, if they just play a smart game, mm. they should win this quite comfortably. Yep. Um, I would take them at the line, the Eagles as well. I think the Giants are going to be buying a bit of their own hype after a win against a measly yeah. Washington football team. There is team something to um, consider here as well with Philly um, is Zach Ertz and Miles Sanders are both out injured. So that injury... Well, was- that would have been good to know and think about before I put it in there. <laughs> but the Giants are still that bad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back it in. Yeah, okay. Back it yeah. in. So I don't, and so am I. I'm just saying... Uh, I love just- when live on the podcast I think like here or I think of a reason of why the link that I've just said is great. Is not great. So, yeah, yeah. But with that said, still back it. Still back it. 100% still back it. <laughs> I think the thing here is still like the Giants don't have a running game. Last yeah. week, Daniel Jones was led, led the team and in he's rushing. He's done it multiple times. When now. Freeman had 16 rushes last week, like 40 odd <laughs> yards, I think they just through the air, it's not clicking. Yeah. On the ground, it's not clicking. Their defense is playing, you know, probably above mm. what I would have expected at the and start I, of the season. Yeah. I think we've spent too long on the Eagles and Giants. <laughs> so let's get into Titan Steelers, which is very good. Who's game of the week? My game of the week yes, this week. The Sports fans, it's four versus five on the Elite Eight, and I could not be more pumped to see this game. Yeah. Mm. Except I won't be watching it because of the crack of bloody dawn on Monday morning, <laughs> yeah. which makes in the morning. it impossible. While we still have our day jobs, it's not feasible to be watching that, is it? Nah, I mean, I get up for it. Yeah, yeah, but you're broken. Um, <laughs> Titans versus Steelers, so. Bit of split between the cast here. I've gone for the Steelers in my game of the week, and yeah. I believe Slammer has joined me. So I have. I the two experts. You. Yep. Not looking good if you're a Titans fan out there because place has tipped you. I'm and all I'm all over the Tennessee Titans. Um, they served me well in this kind of um, corresponding fu- uh, fixture last week. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to go a different way completely. Yeah. When no, they when they knocked I think off, we a, all picked that up. When they knocked off a red hot Bills. So I'm backing them in again here. I think that play action game. 
Um, and obviously, with someone that is as powerful as Derek Henry, as hot as he is at the moment, I think it might yep. just be a bit too much. With that said, don't get me wrong. I Steelers think, defense. Yeah, Steelers see, defense. the reason I've picked the Steelers here is I'm backing the Steelers defense to stop Derek yeah. Henry. Because I'm thinking... I think there, if they can stop Derrick Henry and force Tannehill to have to go out and beat their defense, which is still good on the secondary as well, I think the Steelers get the job done. Absolutely. But Dupree, huge game last week as well. Mm. Two sacks, two tackles for loss, and I think another yeah. four or five imagine tackles. If the, imagine if that. Ryan Shazier hadn't got injured. Their yeah. defense would be even better. Well, well they got Fitzpatrick, Minka Fitzpatrick too. They yeah. lost, um, They're loaded. They're Steelers well. lost Devin Bush for the ACL. Did they? Mm. Wow. Mm. Just saying. So. Well, another thing that I would wouldn't have, to have, wouldn't have read about it though because no one was talking about it on social media because they're still talking about Dax injury. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. No, but yeah, Devin Bush, who is a, a st- I think he's a middle linebacker, I think, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, um, and they do have the electric TJ Watt. Yes, TJ they do. Watt. Yes, the best Watt brother, as coined by the Mate, big he ch- is electric, the big Chucky man. Someone did say that, didn't? Um, they? So yes, uh, that's. I mean. Pumping up his own time. As much as we're picking tips there, um, tune into that one. It, even if, it, if it's a matter of catching it up or highlights or whatever, I think <laughs> it's good to know we're picking tips here. <laughs> yeah. If you're not doing on, anything at 3.30 a.m. Monday on, morning, give that a look. On the back of the tips. Maybe um, in Australia, if your team wins the grand final and you're still celebrating, yeah. turn it on because it might be fun. I might not have slept. Oh, you'd, yeah. yeah. You'd be struggling by Monday morning. I would have bit hoped, of a but, yeah. bit of a spin-off to this. Yeah. Slammers Mob, Geelong. Yeah. Big fan. Yeah. Has all the gear. And absolutely... He's got some idea. Yeah, he's got, got a, bit, a, lot of it's a bit of a claim. Yeah, you got some idea. On the resident stat, man. Yeah, AFL Grand are. Final, the Australian Football League, for yeah, those yeah, for of the American um, fans. 23% of the NF, uh, American fans tuning in. Mm-hmm. And for those negative or less than 1% Singaporeans. Yeah, yep. 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 Big shout out to the Singaporeans who are tuning in. Um, thank you for joining us once again for another episode of Slim Slam and the Bandwagon Fan. Um, oh, into another NFC East matchup, Blaze, and I love it. I know you're hanging for it. The mm-hmm. Washington football team. Woo! Get to host the Dallas Cowboys, um, the leakiest defense in football. Mm. I don't know if that's statistically correct, but it certainly feels like it. Do you reckon Ron's flying to this game? Or do you reckon he's taking his boat? Probably a riverboat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah potentially. He'd be enjoying his Through time. Through the Everglades on his riverboat. This is a this is a, a game that we're all picking the Cowboys. Um, spoiler alert. But the Washington football team get to host it, and we're not so sure about the Cowboys. I think this is just another one where it's the NFC East. It's just like... Whatever, you know, mm. they're going to play and then, you know, the Cowboys will probably win. Maybe Washington get an upset, but at the end of the day, who really cares? You're never going to know what's going to happen next yeah. in this one. You, no. one. One to watch in this game, the O-line of Dallas, Cowboys. It's ravaged. Been massacred. Yeah. It's it been ravaged. Is... And Martin got injured on the weekend yes. as well. That's I where don't I was know where the hell he'll be out, yeah. so... But what, we did say that the Washington D line's pretty good. Yeah, that is something to look for here, especially yeah. our man Chase Young. Absolutely, that's we've why claimed him early. That's why it wasn't yeah. a part of the guarantee. Yeah, we um, we're looking. Hopefully, he hasn't got to the quarterback in a few weeks. Been struggling with a little bit of a was it a groin injury or a yeah. calf? One of the two. Mm, I'm not sure. Bear, come on, mate, help us out. Yeah, <laughs> we need that medical um, report. It could be a if they get some pressure on the red rifle here. This mm. could go the other way. And because we know there's not going to be a lot of... like If Kyle Allen starts, which we assume he will, yeah. Yeah. there's not a lot of defense being played by the Cowboys. So it is a bit iffy. Yeah. It's one to sort of watch, but the Cowboys... I'm tipping consensus. a bounce back game. For yeah. Yeah. I'm tipping a back bounce back game for the Cowboys and Andy Dalton. Yeah. Yeah. And perhaps, I'm tipping a bounce back game for Zeke. Yeah, true. Perhaps consider too that the um, the Washington football team and the Giants just played last week and it was one one point game there. Mm. And then before that, the Cowboys played the Giants and that was a field goal. Right. Yeah, there. that's so, true. So you know, that's there, there's point, a bit of a, there's a bit of a trend there. Um, with that said, I do think you know it'd yeah. be very hard to win. Is the team to win by less than three? You reckon? Yeah, I'm not sure. Wow. I'm going to put anything to do with any kind of handicap betting kind of connotation. Wait, wait. Can it. you just tell me whether you will or won't take it? Because I'll do the opposite. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I'll get to you off air though. Um, the Jets v Bills mm. in a game NFC that East to an AFC East match. How about I'll, I'll ki- I'd kiss a kiss of death on this one. Okay, I'll take the Buffalo Bills. Right for sure. I don't I've, think you've at a dollar thirteen. At a dollar thirteen, all day, day, think you've all got day every day. That's value for money. Because mm, um, so I don't much. think there's any no way, no how that the Jets could possibly beat the Buffalo Bills, especially mm. with no Sam Darnold. Yes, I wish you'd stop trying to baz luck my bets, but um, <laughs> yeah, it'll be three Bills from the boys in the booth here. Uh, the Bills will just have too much. They've had their colours lowered a little bit with two losses in the last, what, five days. Mm-hmm. So they'll be looking to bounce back. The Jets have found themselves in a remarkably unfortunate situation for a lot of teams that have lost when they've been expected to win and been the bounce-back opponent yeah. on the other mm-hmm. end. 
Wrong yeah. place, wrong, wrong time. Wrong place, wrong time. And it, only also, averaging, it doesn't help that they suck. Yeah, zero yeah. points last week, averaging 13 for the year. Bills have a great defense. Yep. I'd be taking the Bills at the line. Yeah, 100%. Mm. 100%. I think that's a no-brainer. I think you look for big numbers out of Josh Allen. I think Singletary will probably be able to run all over him. And obviously, Stefan Diggs and um, you know Measley Beasley and whatnot. They could just really start to cash in. Um, New Orleans Saints v. the Panthers, if you read it as Schnars has written it, or the Carolina Panthers, depending on which way you want to go. Don't ever read it the way Schnars writes it. Very good. Um, New Orleans Saints, fresh off the bye, get to come back in here and hopefully make a statement, a return statement. Um, remind everyone why they are considered one of those top yeah. tier One teams. to watch, Michael Thomas. Does yeah, he play, does he not play? Just yeah. saying that. Well, just thinking that. Yeah, we're going to get to see Michael Thomas for the first time in, what, five weeks? Yeah. Well, so, Last year's reigning offensive player of the year. Yeah. yeah. Set Haven't the record for the most receptions in a year ever. So I think he'll be looking for a big game here, obviously, especially after he was injured and then he had a team sanctioned by for acting up at training a little bit there. So yep. he'll be looking to bounce to that game. It'll probably help Emmanuel Sanders as well, who mm-hmm. has started to look a lot better as well. He's been a lot better. So, yeah. yeah, so I think I'll be taking the Saints and I'll be expecting them to win quite handily. In New Orleans as well. Yes. Yeah. I think the Saints kind of go as Michael Thomas goes um, and that probably goes without saying. I think, you know, the volume of catches he caught last year speaks to that. He's part. He's the integral part of the what of what they want to do. You've almost got that three headed right. dragon where you got Kamara. You've got almost even almost four headed. You have got like Murray, Kamara, then yeah. you two your, your dual headed receivers. Uh, sorry, your running backs, right. and then you've got uh, Sanders and Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a lot of weapons for yeah. Drew to, Drew and to you use. use um, Kamara out of the backfield as well and yeah. as a receiver so, so they, they've got a lot of weapons to start throwing the ball doing some tricky things we know they bring Taysom Hill in to also mix it up yeah. a bit so hopefully now that the Saints have got their man back if he comes back mm. this week you know once again teams haven't been released um, it should be good for the Saints and the Panthers they won those three games in a, on the trot yeah. mm. but at the start of the year they weren't much shake of the sauce bottle they weren't doing no. too many things I think after round one we proclaimed them to have the worst defense in the league yeah. which we were wrong because the Cowboys have shown their Trump true that. colors but the yeah. Saints should for mine easy money here yeah, yeah I would have thought so I think they'll be, they'll be looking to really make a statement I mm. think, you know, in an NFC they're kind of losing you know T- t- yeah it's a narrative oh of course first game back Oh, against good, the Saints. Good yeah. pick from yeah. you. Good Nearly pick got from past you. all of us. Back yeah. in Louisiana. Really good catch. Yeah. So that'll be an interesting little um little one to watch. Little side piece there. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um Texans v Packers. Now the Packers will be looking to bounce back after just I want to hear your thoughts on this one, Blaze. A disappointing game against Tampa Bay, and they go into Houston, Texas to play um. No longer the, the Bill Texans. O'Brien Texans. The um, Rome, what was Romeo it? Cornell. Romeo Cornell. The name always stumps me. Um, I've actually picked the Texans here at home. I think maybe the Packers are a little bit, a little bit softer in the underbelly that we might have thought. And the Texans, who have had a really tough draw so far, I mean, it obviously continues to be difficult. Mm. Um, but I think they've probably been sold down the river a little bit with how hard that draw has been. So I think they're actually a bit better they're than wrong. advertised. They had a really good game last week in terms of points output and whatnot. So I think they um, they might get the chocolates here. But in all honesty, when it comes down to it, this is an opportunity for me to pick one back up on both mm. of them um, where it is, a, it is a chance. So that's that's why I'm looking at that one. Yeah, I think that's stupid. Um, the Texans are 1-5 and five and the Packers are 4-1. and one. That should tell you pretty much all you need to know. The Packers have just had their colours lowered, no doubt, by the mm. Buccaneers. Embarrassed, probably. Uh, Rodgers didn't have his best game and Rodgers is not someone that enjoys playing bad. He no one can does. get pretty in his feels, so I'd be expecting. Oh, Nate a, would beg to differ. Yeah, I'd be expecting <laughs> a big it. game out of Rogers <laughs> this weekend, and the Packers to take care of the Texans, who have got no run game and nothing going on for them except for Deshaun Watson. One hundred percent agree. Thank the you. thing here as well is so, the te- although we keep harping on the fact that the Texans have lost to four of the top five teams in our Elite Eight, mm. they're still losing those games. Yeah. Yeah, so not even still, nabbed one. Yeah, yeah. So you would hope if they're like a you know half shake of the sauce, but rattle the can a little bit, get some coins, shake it around. You'd expect them to win one game from that, yeah. and they haven't been able to do that, which just shows against those powerful you put your teams. Flag in the ground somewhere, don't yeah, you? yeah. And against those teams that are, you know are the big you know the big teams this year making up the bulk of the elite eight. 
they've got it. They've got to win, and I just don't think they've showed anything to say that we've got it in us to win a game like this. So, hundred yeah. percent on board with Slammy here, taking the Packers. One to watch there, boys. One to watch. We'll we'll eagerly anticipate the result and see what we can do with that. And if I have to cop more flack, I cop more flack. That's what I do. I sit mm. in the middle for that exact purpose. Cop a bit of Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco. <laughs> um, if it was Joe Flacco, he wouldn't hit me. The Bengals. If you were standing in the end zone. Yeah. The <laughs> Bengals. The Bengals v the Browns. Cincinnati Bengals. That is. Um, probably sticking with a similar narrative. A team that's probably smiting after getting really embarrassed by Pittsburgh. This the Cleveland Browns. Um, but with all that said, Nick Chubb's not back, so. You know, the woes of that passing game may continue here. However, I don't think the Bengals are bringing enough to the table to kind of mix it with them just yet. I actually had a bit of trouble tipping this one, Blaze, because mm. this is the Battle of Ohio, the battle of the two teams wearing orange. Uh, I actually think this one could be a lot closer than it probably looks on paper. Burrow has been pretty good all year. Can't really fault his rookie year so far to this stage. Baker's coming off his worst game all year, no doubt. Um so I actually think this one could be quite close. I think this is an upset alert game. Mm. I think you really got to be on edge with this one. I have tipped the Browns because I couldn't, I didn't have the stones to go for the Bengals. But I just, I can see this one being close. This is in Cincinnati, so they get the home field advantage. You know, they hate the Browns because you know they're in the same division. Yeah. So I think this one's going to be a lot closer than expected. Um. So yeah, take from that what you will, and I'll be taking the Browns, but in a close one. AJ Green kind of bounced back a little bit last week after, you know, some rumor mill kind of trade talks were flying around. So, yeah, they've got players. Yeah. The Bengals have got players. Oh, they're still, definitely. They're still building. Um, and yeah. T Higgins has started to come across, along really well. Yeah. So, I think you just need to see a little bit more out of Mixon. He hasn't, he's had one or two really good games this year and then the other's one big been game. trash. Yeah. So, yeah. So what I was just searching for and you boys were stalling for quite perfectly there. Was these, <laughs> two, these two teams played in week two. I oh, did that. Yeah, okay. thirty-five to thirty, and it was a oh. close game, mm. and it was a it was a shootout. Yeah, yeah. and um, Joe Burrow got the chocolates that day. Well, didn't win, but he played a lot better than Baker. Yeah, yeah. this is one to watch back. So it was thirty to thirty-five at Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to Cincinnati. Yeah, still within Ohio. Not not too much geography there for no. those. To, uh, <laughs> enjoy our friend Slam Geography of America. Subscribe to it. But they've lost Nick Chubb since that game. Yep. Which has taken out mm-hmm. probably a third of their offense. Yep. This is Massive. upset. This is got upset written all over it. Baker mine. is banged up. Yep. J- Smokey Joe is not playing too badly. They've yep. been competitive in most of their games this year, the Bengals. They've won one. They've drawn one and lost four. And besides one of them, three of them have been close. Yeah. Yep. They are a real chance here. Yeah. 100%. But, this has got upset written all over it. And you know the thing I don't like about the brands that I didn't mention in the last review show? Yeah. So Baker gets pulled. Odell came out and he's swanning around on the sideline with his shirt half taken off, his pads half undone, his shoes are off and he's swanning around like he doesn't give a rat's and he's chirping with the fans. Mm. Like, they just scream disaster. Yeah. They really do. Like, they just don't look like their head's in it. There's such a bunch of prima donnas in Cleveland there. Yeah. I think this has got upset written all over it. Watch this space on that one and mm. if the best bet was still in circulation, it might be something you'd want to... You'd want to just... Well, okay, there you Browns go. Blazers, Blazers Dab- shot the Bengals <laughs> in the foot there. <laughs> Dab- uh, the Falcons and Lions. Atlanta Falcons fresh off their first win of the year. That is correct. Yeah, I was just drawing yeah. an absolute it blank. Is, I was, cr- is, I was crossing my wires with, um, with the Texans there. But the Falcons are coming in here. They get to host the Detroit Lions. Um, Detroit after another good win as well for them. Mm. Um, so a few... you know, A battle of these kind of lower ranked teams... I don't know that you can pull too much out of this of interest, but it's just a, it's a matter of watch this space. And if the Falcons can win their second game, good luck to them and likewise to Can I change my tip? Yeah, if you want to, sure. Yeah. I've just looked at this and realised that the Falcons are the home team. And for some, for some reason, when I had this in my head, I tipped the Lions. Yeah. I'm going to be taking the Falcons this week. I'm going for two in a row. Jumping okay. Across. Yeah, well, yeah. At, so you're just following me and Blaze. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, yeah, because mine and Blaze's tips are already on the board. Fine, I'm staying with the Lions. <laughs> <laughs> You can't um, change. Yeah, this is interesting. I think the Falcons, obviously, <laughs> are they going to get two in a row? But I'm, I'll, I'll pose this question to you, Schnauz. Is there a less interesting team or a team that anybody cares less about than the Detroit Lions? Well, well, I'm not le- sure I honestly could tell you that I've seen three minutes of their games all year. Yeah. Unless you're living in Detroit, probably no one cares. Yeah. yeah. And They've really- just been ir- irrelevant for so long. Oh, I just since Megatron, yeah. I reckon the last yeah. time I watched a good game of Detroit play was when Stafford and Megatron were going absolutely ham. Yeah, mm. they were flying. Megatron was unreal to watch. 
Stafford, we all know, can air the ball out, but they just don't... I don't know what it is. It just lacks charisma. It lacks market. It lacks mm. a whole host of, you know, those intrinsic things that the big market teams have. And obviously... Patricia's a boring coach Matt, too. Yeah, there's nothing going on. You know, the running game, they've got Swift in there now who's young and exciting, maybe. And Adrian um, Peterson. And Peterson's back there. So you've got that historical aspect if you subscribe to that kind mm. of thing. Narrative. I, I think... You know, if there was any team, if I was to look through, and this is very much off the cusp, if I was looking through this entire list and I was in a Madden kind of situation and I was relocating a team and restarting something, it's the Detroit Lions that I would say would be the best one to rebrand and like give more, yeah, you know, give some just, spunk to There them. is just something about their brand that hmm. just says losers. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously. It's, they no, it's, it's they honestly won correct. a playoff game in like 30 years. Yeah. Like, they are awful. I'm not sure I've ever even seen them play a playoff game. Yeah. I wonder how my mate Jeff Okuda's going as well. Like, they because, have Barry yeah. Sanders, who I mentioned in the last show. He only ever won one playoff game. Yeah. And he's a, like, the, one of the best running backs of all time. He's in the top three of all Consen- time. Consensus, like, yeah. In saying this, I'm confident with my tip because the Falcons are going to blow it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. You would be taking the Lions in the second half, I would have thought. I'd be taking the Lions in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> Matt yeah. Stafford, game-winning drive in the last quarter. Put your yeah. money on it. All right. Matt Stafford, I think, over the last few years actually does lead the NFL in fourth quarter comeback drives at the end of the game to win a game. Huge. You Tell, you that. First. Mm. Tell you that. So you'll be riding that tip home there, Shinazi boy. Mm. Um, I don't so I speak for all three of us um, without consulting the board, but I'd suggest that probably none of us will be watching that one and it would be a highlights kind of situation. Oh, oh Sam's man, Calvin. He's Calvin Ridley. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That yeah, might true. get me out of bed. That's so true. Yeah. Old Calvin will Julio, be floating around. Julio played well. Yeah, last week. Yeah, no, dude, the Falcons have got Falcons are great to watch on offense. Yeah, you just don't want to see them play defense. Yeah. Well, no, they're great to watch on offense and defense because when the other teams yeah. on offense, they're scoring should as well. Be yeah, this Sparks one, fly. this one should have a lot of points scored in it because I checked the line for this game for the overs and unders for my guarantee, but the line, the line was at like 57, 58. Yeah, okay. So, so they're back. We're looking up. at lots of points here. They're so, backing up. Yeah. Um, How about you tell us a little bit about it, your game of the week? Like? The game of the week for myself uh, this week coming is the Cardinals and the Seahawks. Thank you for the segue, Chucky. Um, Arizona coming in here to host the Seahawks. And we've got a situation where the Cardinals have won their last couple. They got absolutely baked by the big guy and the, the other big guy to my right. Um, and, you know, since then, since having a look in the mirror, they might have just found a little bit of something, but we're not sure yet. We need to see something against a quality opposition. Um, and that comes, you know, opportunity comes knocking in the form of the Seattle Seahawks. Well, it's, so It's older brother versus younger brother here. Yeah. You've yeah. got Kyler versus... Yeah. Um, yeah. Russell. 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 So you've got Mr. Six Foot versus Mr. Five Eleven. Yeah. Yep. You know, not a lot of height. No. A lot of passes probably going to get deflected this week. Would have thought so. Chandler Jones is a big question mark for me. So he leads the NFL in sacks across the last, is it four or five years? Right. It's him, then Aaron Donald, then I believe it's Khalil Mack. And wow. I, and, um, so you're telling me he's got more sacks than Aaron Donald? Yep. Then he is a squad of men. Two and a half. Right? I think Donald had 70 and Chandler Jones had 72 and a half. Wow. Chandler Jones was, had 19 and a half, was last it last year? year? Yeah. 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 He, he was huge. Very close to the single season sack record. He didn't play last week okay so he was out I'm not too sure what his injury is but for them to get some pressure on Russell and you know force the issue a bit mm. they need it's him back it's not a great O-line no it's not no so they need to get him back to force otherwise Russell's going to sit in the pocket he's going to find old mate DK mm. and they're going to absolutely yeah pop off they're a bit light on at corner at the moment as well mm. yep so it's a watch your space. Um, I think myself and Schnazzi, we're taking the Seahawks here, even though they're 100%. away. Yep. Um, backing in the form team, the top team in the Elite Eight should get the job done here. Um, but Chucky, no. you've, you've gone with the Cardinals. I so. have gone with the Cardinals, Blaze. And yeah. as you know, oh, me and the Cardinals, have we had a roller coaster this year? We've up been and up down. and down and all over the place with my love the and fans my might see a broken, broken man next yeah. week. And you know how I'm a, I'm a bit of a stickler and I love you know the superstitious stuff and patterns and things like that. So I'm pretty sure the Cardinals won their first two games and they've lost the next two games and then they won the next two games. So that doesn't bode well for me tipping the Cardinals. Yeah. But, so, 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 so how does that help your tip? Yeah, you're making your case against it. No, so the, I'm about to tell you. Oh. Why okay, I've sorry. tipped the Cardinals is the Seahawks' defense is remarkably banged up. Like, yeah. not even banged up. They're just not very good. Um, Kenyon Drake has just come off a monster game at running back mm-hmm. against the Cowboys, who have got a similar defense. Um, in that, it's not very good. It sucks. Yeah. Um, he's a gun. Kyler has been playing better the last yeah. couple of weeks, although he did miss a few shots. But I, I'm, I can't see him doing that two weeks in a row. This game is at home. Mm-hmm. NFC West matchups in division are... You know, 
50-50 flip of the coin because all the teams are really good. So I've given it to the Cardinals based on the fact that I think their offense is explosive as. I think the Seahawks defense is not that good. I'm hoping the Cardinals defense can stand up with Buda Baker, maybe if Chandler Jones is back up against Russell Wilson and the fact that they're at home, that's why I've got the Cardinals. Okay. I mean, he makes a good case and I think that's a high-powered offense. Obviously, he didn't touch on... Um, old Nuke Hopkins either there who is a I didn't feel f- like I needed to Blaze yeah, it, go, it does go without saying you'll so. get the week as well Blaze yeah I think that, you know you've got a real good storyline here in terms of a Cardinals team that's probably trying to make a statement mm. um, that they are up to scratch and they're at this level and the Seahawks they're trying to um, tell Slammer that they deserve number one in the Elite Eight exactly right so there you go at least a seat at the table at least the seat at the table well they've They've got this. They're at the head of the table the at the King. moment. Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about the Cardinals. Oh, no. No, 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 no. They're on the outer They're team. on the outer, mate. Um, mm. Chargers v Jaguars. Um, this game shouldn't take too much longer than 30 seconds, I wouldn't have thought. Um, LA, you know... I've been impressed with Justin Herbert this year. Yeah, Justin Absolutely. Herbert's Justin Herbert's a storyline yeah. there. Mentioned um, this to Slammer though. Haven't seen him off a bar before. No. True. So he did say that. You'll have a to, stupid thing to say, but he did say it. You'll have to wait and see. Um the Jaguars are, are quickly living up to our preseason kind of predictions with them. I just don't you know as expected. Much chop. As expected, they do yes, yeah, well. As expected, they just don't have the cattle for, mm. you know, an NFL season. Um someone having a good year though is Miles Jack. Miles Jack, yeah, he can he play. Is yeah, probably someone who, if he, you know, not nervous, but he he could be the only piece they pretty much have that could get traded. Yeah, mm. he's a middle linebacker for those. At home. He's, he plays on the defense. He's playing incredibly well, but probably because the the defense is on the field a lot. I was gonna say, it spends mm. a lot of time out yeah. there. It gives you a lot. But of, he's one shining mm. light for him. I think yeah, mm. he, he makes plays, and you know, it, he's a guy that obviously plays with a bit of pride. Like, and that yeah. franchise. It just it's really stinky. Um, but he he's given it his best effort, so good luck. Are the to char- Chargers are at home here, are they? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry, I had it in my head that they were away, but yeah. so no, I thought this might have been a little bit closer if it was in Jacksonville, because as this is a very long trip, yeah. obviously, Naturally. all the way from the east coast to the west coast for the Jags. Um, but yeah, so obviously Florida, the Cali, we, we mm-hmm. have tipped the Chargers here, and I, that is backed up by the fact that they are playing at home. I yeah. So, yeah. You happy with that? Yeah, I'm very happy with that now, Blaze. We'll have to watch. Yeah, like we mentioned briefly, Justin Herbert's. You know, rise to We've fame. We've been impressed. Yeah, as I think he, him and I think he is right there, neck and neck with Burrow for Rookie of the Year at the moment. If Burrow doesn't get a few wins and somehow the Chargers can end up with that eight and eight ish win mark, yeah, he's had the Chargers in every game. Yeah, yep, every game. They are the best team in the league at losing one possession games. Oh, 100 mm. percent. Yeah. But to be fair, it did happen last year with Phil. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So it, it's, it's probably more new a, for that franchise. It's a franchise no. issue more than it's a quarterback yeah. issue. No. It's a systemic issue with them. Um, systemic. Very good from you. Thanks, Mark. It's un- unlike you to have that kind of vocabulary. Um, I'm just glad that I used it correctly. <laughs> New, England, New England Patriots host the 49ers um, fresh off a win. I think the 49ers here probably too strong. The Patriots let us down a little bit against Denver. So wow. we probably need to see something a bit out of them here. However, it is in, it is in Boston, so mm. um, up in Foxborough there. So it's going to be an interesting one. I can hear the geography in my right ear like the devil on my shoulder. Apparently, it's a really long road trip if you didn't hear it over the mic. It's massive. The Patriots aren't that good either, just FYI. Mm. Um, so, this, the host is losing his marvels. He's hearing voices in his ears. Um, so, you know, Debo Samuel... <laughs> You're going to hear voices from somewhere. That's where I hope you're hearing them. <laughs> um, so, it's, it's actually... Head. It's a bit reactive here that... Three of it, all three of us have gone the Niners on the tipping. Reactive. Patriots have really had only one bad week, and they are playing at home. They, they are lose, two and three though. They don't lose too many games at home though. They are two and three on the yeah, season. I yeah, yeah, I know. But I'm just saying, it's a bit. You know, it's probably a closer game than the way three of us tipping the Niners think, makes it sound. If you know I think I mean. we really sort of saw last week with the Niners that they sort of took it up a notch yeah. against against the Rams, and we're hoping that on on the back of that they're going to ride yeah. the coke towers into this week. A good win against the Patriots, and you must say, hey, look, the Niners season is back on track. Yeah, I mean, get Kittle, some players back from injury, get Kittle's some consistency. To, yeah, Kittle's starting to click on all oh. cylinders. Mm. Um, Jimmy looked better. Makes any quarterback yeah, the look Niners good. probably aren't too far away from getting back to what they were when they get a few of those players back from injury. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, now, obviously that D line remains shattered for the rest of the year, but the pieces around, like on off- offense, especially getting players back into the fold there to really mm. start to perform. So, And the Patriots just coughed up a game at home to Denver. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. that's kind of a... Re- we need to see something out of the Patriots. Well, that's, just, that's what I'm saying there, Blaze, which is why I'm thinking maybe this isn't as clear-cut as it looks. How many games do you reckon the Patriots ever lose at home in a row? Yeah, probably not often. So Certainly not in the 25 Stats years. will be on their side for the last 20 years. Absolutely, yeah. it would. 100%. 100% they would. 
Hey, um, three to nine is there, um, but watch this space just depending on how that kind of unfolds with the Absolutely. Patriots at home. There's a lot of there's a lot of fifty fifties, I reckon, this week, Blaze. Yeah, a lot a, of them. It's a tough one to tip. Tough tipping week, it I reckon. It's a tough tipping week. Um, the Broncos and the Chiefs. Um, up in mile high, Paddy Mahomes is taking his um, monsters up there and he's gonna start airing it out in the mile high stage. Take his Two team, words, Blaze. Lev Bell. Yeah. Mm. Debut game for Lev Bell. So Obviously, deep. couldn't play on the what weekend. What are you realistically expecting out of him? Week one, uh, probably ten to fifteen touches. Yep. You know, and you probably hope for around seventy-five yards, maybe a couple of catches in there as well. Yep. Just spread the ball around, really, with him, and probably just splitting time between him and Clyde. Do different things. Try different schemes. Yeah, do you reckon they want to out of there with the dub? Do you goal line power back type <laughs> role as yeah, well? Absolutely. Probably in there for him. Do you reckon they take the approach that? While they've got maybe a few easier games coming up, they just see what they they see what they've got in him, mm, and yes. just see if he's actually going to be any good and going to fit the offensive mm. scheme. You and then it. when it, when push comes to shove, when we're in playoffs, they're going to know this and go, look, stick him in the scrap heap. Well, mm. actually, he's going to help us win. You've yeah. also yeah, and I, I think, think I think I wouldn't be surprised to see him and Clyde out there running up left and right of Pat, and then you don't know what's coming. Yeah, you know, one can run off as if he's catching a pass. One can go, you know. There's one play coach that could bait. drop some players. Is oh, yeah. Within a week, it's dream old mate Andy Reid. Yeah. yeah. He, He's gone to the dream coaching position. He is a historian of the game, and he loves going back through the record books and looking at plays and just pulling... Random pulling, yeah, yeah, it's 100%. ridiculous. Like the Rose Bowl play from last year, that was yeah. like a 1940s game. Yeah. I think if anyone's earned the credit, it's, <laughs> it's that organization and that coach. And I think, as we touched on in the previous show, like you'll be able to manage... If anyone can manage him and fit him in and figure out the best way to do it to maximize output. He can't output. get out of line because he'll no. just get flicked. Yeah. I don't even think he's that big of a distraction. No, anyway. I don't think yeah. he's either. They, I have, think that they were interviewing him on a show the other day, sorry, interviewing a former teammate of his at the Steelers and he was saying, no, he was never a locker room I issue think, sort of guy. The yeah. Steelers, he just wanted to get paid. Yeah. yeah. And if he didn't hold out, look, then and he had a bad season, he's going to get no money. Yeah. So I think he did the right thing there. The whole Jets is a dumpster fire. So what, read into yeah. that what you want. Exactly. It's not like yeah. an L. Thomas situation where you've gone from Seattle and then you've gone to Baltimore and then you're yeah. on the outer of both of those two teams. Yeah. yeah. He's gone from getting wanting to get paid and gone to a dumpster fire. Nope. So I don't everybody, know how much I read and, into and it. And everybody that leaves the Jets looks a hell of a lot better. Yeah. Like anybody that leaves Adam Gase in particular looks a hell of a lot better. Ryan Tannehill was under Adam Gase at Miami. Miami. Left there, looks a hell of a lot better. Even Robbie Anderson hmm. was a wide receiver at the Jets last year. Is now down at Carolina. Looks, looks a hell of a lot better than he did at New York. Everybody true. that leaves Adam Gase looks a hell of a lot better. Yep. There's a common theme here, and he's so, Adam. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he has a bounce back. We're talking about a guy that was an all pro twice. Yeah. Not an all star twice, an all pro twice, as if he was the best running back in the league two years. Oh, he was and he's only 28 and, years old. Yeah. Him and Brown, that one two punch, you had wide receiver, you had your running back. Yeah. They were the best combo in the game for I a, think a lot of the, period of time. I think a lot of the personality thing with him gets lumped in with Antonio Brown because they left the Steelers around the same time. Probably tainted. You're probably yeah, right. I reckon he's been yeah. tainted with it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting. Watch this space. I think... If, 100%. It's one to watch. If they get anything like Lev Bell of old, um, you know, and some people are saying he's past it, I don't subscribe to that. I think he's going to be... He's really, 28, Blake. He's going to be really good in this, in this situation. Look, I don't know the guy, but across the next 10 weeks, we're going to learn a lot about this guy. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And he's just stepped into the... You know the Hollywood of teams at the moment. Like he's yeah. right front and center. People are gonna know. There's stars it, everywhere, aren't they, Blaze? Oh, isn't it? It's just like the Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, the Walk of Fame. Oh yeah. Said it's the Chiefs locker room, and there's stars everywhere. Everywhere you look, you have to wear sunglasses inside. Oh, it'd be bright, wouldn't it, Blaze? Yeah, impossible to see. Oh. <laughs> you two done it, a little glory hole over there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You want to take us through the Raiders Bucks? Raiders Bucks. No, it's my game of the week. I'll take you through it. True. Sunday night football, Slammer. Tell us. Slammer's game of the week. Yep. Raiders Bucks. So, I reckon people are thinking, Slammer, you've lost it. No, the Raiders have been playing some pretty good football, especially at home. And then they beat the Chiefs. So, they have to have a little bit of respect. They, haven't, name at the moment. they haven't lost to a team under 500, the Raiders. There you go. Mm. But this team's not under 500. But, so this game, I reckon, will be a bloody good one. <laughs> Bucks go into Las Vegas. That's, that was so wrong. Yeah, I was going to say it's over. The teams they've lost to are all have an over 500 record. Right. So their record, although they're two and three, yeah, it's um, you no, know, they're three and two. The Raiders. Shit. <laughs> stat is just if you'd just like to stop talking during my little segue, <laughs> not even stat, segue, just my little this monologue. That is the Jets with Adam Gates. <laughs> <laughs> so the Bucks are going into Las Vegas. 
I think it's going to be a good game, closer than most people expect, Blaze. Now, yep. did the, Ra- the Raiders have just come off a block by, I believe? Yep. So they're rested. They're ready to go. Carr looks like the quarterback of a few years ago. He looks good again. Darren Waller is looking really good at tight end all yep. year. Um, the running back's name is escaping me right Josh now. Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs. He's been good ever since he entered the league, yep. what, you know, 20 games ago. Got a bit of a receiving core down there now. It'll brilliant. be interesting to see up against that Bucks rushing defense. As we said, it's probably the best rushing defense in the entire of the NFL. Yeah. And then we'll get to see what the Bucks can do on offense. I think this game is a real interesting one. If you're in Australia, it's on at a nice time slot if you happen to have the Monday off. If you've had yeah. a big weekend watching the AFL and you need a day off Monday, this game will be on for you at about 10 a.m. Yeah. One to watch. I like it, Chucky. Well well synced up. Did and I'll you... be taking the Bucks. You'll be taking the Bucks. I'll be taking the Raiders at home here in the Death Star. <laughs> Um, mainly because I want to make up another tip. And also, I'd love to see the Bucks lose because I'm starting to edge ever closer to having to pay out on some bets here in regards yes. to their overall record. So I think this is a smoky chance. And the Raiders obviously have knocked off the Chiefs. <laughs> they got a good win against the Saints earlier in the year. I think it was the Saints. Mm. Um, so, Raiders, yeah. they beat your Chiefs. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. what I said. Mm. Yeah. Are you going to try and fix up the stat or are you just leaving nah, it? No, nah, yeah. Because like, you said something about did they only beat teams under 500? They only lost the teams that had an over 500 record. Right, However, they beat the Chiefs because the Chiefs were over 500. Yeah, I'm saying the teams that lost to. So yeah, I was saying right. their losses aren't bad losses. But however, right. I've just realized one of those losses was the Patriots. And they and lost on the weekend, put them to two and three. Yeah. So, which is where I was getting confused. So really, so, the whole stat just sucks. Yeah. It did suck. It would have been good last week. But, uh, <laughs> when you try to run some. They didn't play quickly. last week. They had a buy. Would have been good two weeks ago. <laughs> no, 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 no. Would have been good last week because the, the Patriots still would have had a 500 record. Yeah, but we wouldn't be talking about the Raiders because they didn't have a game. Doesn't matter. <laughs> probably, you know how I know this? I probably researched it last week and going, oh, they're not playing. Yeah. But I picked them in the bar and that was good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just throw it in. Um, no, light. so the Bucks after... Even when it's not factual anymore. The Bucks. All right, let's get past it. Yep. We're all grown men here. We are. Except Blaze. Mm. Excuse me. Some of us more than others. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're still waiting for him to fill out and reach puberty. Drive by. <laughs> the Bucks. Definitely after last week's... <laughs> Made that one clear. <laughs> after last week's game against the Green Bay and just the way they turned it on... <laughs> the, the Green Bay. <laughs> oh, jeez. Any mistake now. <laughs> You've set this precedent. Yep, I'll be taking the Bucks. Okay, <laughs> cool. Into Monday Night Football, our last game of the week. Rams versus Bears. Uh, Blaze, who are you taking in this one? Oh, I'm going to take the Rams, my friend. I okay. think I can speak for um, all three of us here when yeah. I say that we, um, Thank you. we are very reluctant to pick the Bears. <laughs> But what I was going to do, Schnars, before you say thank you, is allow you the opportunity to distinguish why you'll be taking the Rams over the Bears this week. I don't like picking the Bears. <laughs> Very good. And Slammer, you're just looking out for the head office down there. They don't want to have to be able to you know, fork out a bit more coin for the Bear Cave. Yeah, the Rave Cave. Yeah, yeah the Dom Perignon. It's getting very expensive. And they've you know, they've had way more wins than they thought they'd have. Um, if the Bears win this one, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to fall over. I want I, them to I lose so we can it. get rid of them out the Elite Eight. Yeah, yeah I don't get it. Um, but as, we've se- as I've said many a time now, they've only beaten NFC East teams, the Rams. So yeah. here's a chance to, you know, make me stick that in my pipe and smoke it. But, I mean, it's the Bears. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, but, you know, but the Bears are 5-1. You've got to go out there. You've got to beat who's in front of you. So, Rams, go out, do what you have to do, and try and get yourself back into that Elite Eight. Yeah, maybe do a little swap with the Bears in the eighth position, mm. depending on how the cards and the bills kind of fare up. And the Colts. And the Colts, of course, as well, who are, um, you know... Banging on the door. 4-2. Four and two. The four Colts and two, don't have, on the door. Colts don't have a game this week. Bye. No, they probably got the bye. Yeah, mm. so that is going to be hard for them. <laughs> Hang a little bit longer. <laughs> That's going to be hard for them. It's but, right, hey, <laughs> we all make mistakes. I was just having a moment. I was just like, I'm pretty sure we haven't talked about the Colts, but anyway. No, and there's a reason. <laughs> that is going to do us um, another night of some rambly fun, mm. I guess you'd call it. Um, we've got all our tips in the books. At the moment, Schnazzy sits pretty at 65 in first place. Slammer's on 62, and I sit at a lowly 57. Mm. Um, until I can raise that number, I'm going to continue to cop shit from these guys relentlessly. Mind the language, but at this point, it's probably warranted. Mm. Um, so, yes, with all that said, thanks for joining us again on the Slim Slam and Bandwagon Fan Show, proudly brought to you by the Jersey Cartel. Make sure you check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Slim Slam and the Bandwagon Fan there. Apple Music. Wherever you get your po- uh, your podcast, Spotify and whatnot, is the same as with YouTube. Subscribes and follows there to keep supporting us. Um, and Twitter, SSBF Podcast, as always, the big schnazzle is all over that. Um, with all that said, schnazzle, you got anything else to add before we 
we move on. No, you're going to stay tight-lipped like a mime? Yeah, right, mate. He's been slim. I've been slim. That's the bandwagon fan. Good night.